and thanks for checking out this new video here on the Museum Modeler channel. Today, I'm going to be looking at 1700 scale photo etch railing for ships, specifically how to cut, form, attach, and paint it. Okay, so before I begin, I want to go over a quick description of the types of tools that I'll be using uh, during this tutorial. First off, you're going to, of course, need photo etch. Uh, this is a gold metal models 1700 scale miscellaneous ship fittings set that I'll be using. Uh, you're also going to need to get your plastic ready. Uh, in this case, I have a spare piece from a um, 1700 scale USS San Diego kit from Dragon I'll be using because it has a number of different shapes, both simple and complex. It's a good demo piece. In addition to those pieces, you're going to need your cutting supplies. Uh, there's two main things that I use for cutting. The first is a standard number 12 exacto blade, the curved blade, and then a set of photo etch shears. Those Zuron precision photo etch shears are my favorites, and um, you'll see why when I actually show you how I cut them off of the fret, but I think those are indispensable. For forming tools, I have a number of different things that I use. Uh, most commonly is a, a folding tool called a hold and fold. There are tons of variants of this on the market. You don't need to go specifically with a hold and fold, uh, but something that's more than just a pair of, of razor blades and uh, you know pliers being used is going to be more effective uh, if you've got something like this. Uh, as complex or simple as you want it to be, and of course you need your set of razors for, for bending that etch with the tool. I also have a uh, bending tool from the small shop for curved pieces. You can see this piece of aluminum has um, these curved channels in it. To be perfectly honest, I don't use it nearly as much as I thought I would, but I do use the dowel rods that it came with all of the time. I use them in conjunction with any piece of foam or soft pliable material to do rolls and bends. So not 90 degree turns, but more uh, graceful curves and rails. You'll need something cylindrical for that. And again, I'll show you that when I get to that part of the video. Simple folding tools, I have a couple of pliers. These are non-serrated. They are flat, smooth side pliers. I don't know exactly what the word is, but there's no serration here. This is a set of modeling pliers from Zeron, but then I also use a set of just generic um, flat edge pliers from Walmart, a couple of bucks there. So I have a couple of different options. Once you've got all your pieces formed, you're going to need to attach them, and so here's my glues. I use two really primarily all the time. The first is Loctite Super Glue. This is not a hobby glue. This is a standard super glue that you can get at any home improvement section. I got this at Walgreens here in the States, but Walmart, Home Depot, what have you. Uh, I love this stuff. It's thick. It holds parts in place, and it dries solid in about 10 seconds, so it's fantastic. If I need a longer set time, I use Gator Grip Acrylic Hobby Glue, which I did a full review of on the same channel a couple of years ago. It's a white glue. It uh, holds pieces in place. It gives you um, a good amount of drying time. I'd say a good five minutes or so before this stuff really starts to cure, and it fully cures within an hour or so. To apply these glues for CA glue, I have a homemade uh, CA applicator. This is the pin vise with two different size sewing needles chucked into each side. But for the sewing needles, what I've done is, let me hold that up to the camera there. There we go, clipped off the very end of the eye of each needle. So what I have instead of a hole is a nice Y there. And that's perfect for dipping into glue. It picks up just the right amount. And then you apply it where you need to. I use the two different sizes on this because, you know, sometimes you need a lot, sometimes you need a little. And when the time comes to clean it up, you just burn it off. And again, that will be demonstrated in a little bit. For the Gator Grip or any other white glue, I just use a toothpick. So, you know, get a box of 200 for a dollar from any store and you're good. I rarely need to use this with the Loctite, but sometimes you still need to use CA Accelerator. This speeds up the drying process of, of any CA type super glue. It'll go ahead and make this stuff dry instead of 10 seconds, you know, instantaneously. So if you know that your uh, piece is exactly where it needs to be, you can go ahead and set it. Uh, it works a lot with rigging, for example, but for photo etch, I see how you would need it too sometimes. So that's the rundown of the different tools I'm going to be using. And uh, we're now going to dive in and look at the process of cutting, folding, rolling, and attaching your photo etch railings. Okay, to get started, we're going to go ahead and cut off a piece of railing from this gold metal models fret. 
Now to do this, I'm going to use the Zuron shears. That's because gold metal models metal is a little bit harder than your standard brass and the shears are going to work really well for it. When it comes to actually cutting the railings off of the fret, you'll notice that the railings are, um, how do I put this, they're connected at certain spots. So here there's actually a long strand of metal connecting each one vertically. Here there's a long strand connecting each one. And those I find to be beneficial for gauging myself in cutting because what I do to keep my railing length short, because that's what you want to do is cut short lengths, is I go ahead and I cut around those sections. So let me get the snippers in here. Let me see what I'm talking about. One second, y'all. It's kind of hard to do with the camera in my face. There we go. All right. So I can't move the snippers all the way over because they are they're blocked right there by one of those pieces of metal connecting everything. So I snip right before it. And then I'll snip again all the way at this edge. Now, just this part, I consider this like resource gathering. Like I'm here to harvest railing. It doesn't need to be precise. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be cut off of the fret. And what I've done here is I've now got, I've left a little bit of this side on the fret and a little bit right there where the railing's connected. But I've got a nice inch and a half, two inches or so of railing. It's got some jagged edges to it, but um, there you go. got some jagged edges to it. But for these purposes, that doesn't matter because all you need is the raw materials. If you're not working with gold medals and you're working with some more traditional brass, I just want to quickly cover the other way to do this. Uh, I have here a cutting mat. It's glass, hence all the reflective surface. It's just a, <clears throat> a $1 frame I got at a store called Dollar Tree. Uh, took the glass out of the frame, mounted it to a piece of acrylic I had, and voila. For the brass, this is when I use the number 12 knife instead of the shears because brass is a lot softer and it's a lot less forgiving if you uh, mess something up. But for here, I'm just going to take the wide, long part of the blade, not the tip and not the base down here, but this area where I've got a wide working surface. And I'm going to put steady and even pressure, rocking it back and forth right there until I hear it snip. Do it to this next one. And voila. I don't know if you can see that cut right off. If the edges are jagged, so if I didn't get this exactly right along the frets, uh, that's where I use the shears. There it is. And that's where I will again. See there how there's a little bit of a burr? And I'll take these shears and I will trim it up right along the edge. Let's be really precise with it. And if you cut a little bit too much, as I did there, because I'm sitting at a really unworkable angle, just trim the next section to the next uh, stanchion. That was better. There you go. All right, but for this, like I said, we're using the, the brass, the gold metal models. So let's get this out of the way and move on to the plastic that we're using. It's this top of uh, superstructure for the USS Atlanta. To measure out railing, you first need to have a uh, solid foundation from which to work. So I'm going to go ahead and take this ugly bird up section here. I'm going to clean that up with my shears. I'm also going to do this by holding a little closer to my face, so it's going to go out of focus for a second. Hold on. There we go. Nobody ever said that was easy. I had to hold it really close to my face, but there it is nice and snipped. So now I have a solid working edge. Let's see how many vertical pieces I need to do this straight stretch. So I'm going to take this, hold it along that straight stretch, and lucky us, that is four vertical sections of rail. You see that? One, two, three, four. 
Now there's this little angle down here. So it's four straight and then an unknown number at this angle. So I'm gonna again take the rail I have. And I'm gonna hold it along that angle and see that it is almost exactly one half section. So what I need to get ready here is a four and a half section length of rail. Four for that long straight stretch, then a half for that angle. So let me go ahead and cut that. And again, I'll do this probably a little bit off camera. Let's see. Okay, I've counted it, so now I've got the rail in place. Put my thumb on it, hold it in place, and snip. Voila, four and a half. Take my extra rail, leave it for when I need it. And now let's get to the folding. All right, so to fold this rail, I have a couple of different options. The first of which is I can use my flathead pliers here. I can grip the rail at a given point. And because this is so short, I can just bend it up using my fingertip. But that pressure is a little bit uneven. It doesn't always result in perfection. So if this rail is going to be somewhere visible where you want the edges to be perfectly clean, I'm going to go ahead and use my folding tool for that. Because I measured out and I know that the bend in this rail comes right at the four vertical section mark. Vertical section mark, rather. I'm going to place that right there. So I have half a piece of rail now underneath the edge of this holding tool. I'm going to slide my razor underneath. I'm going to bend it to something close to the angle that I think I need. And pull it back out. All right, you see that? So now let's go and get it on our ship piece. And what have we got? Look at that, just about perfect. All right, we're gonna attach that in a minute, but I wanna cover the other angle of folding, and that is gonna be curves. You can see this nice curved section here. When I first started doing photo etch, I didn't know what I was doing, and I was tempted to do one long straight piece that started here, worked down this angle, went down this long straight, did this huge 90 degree jog and then kept on going to say this midpoint and let me tell you that was the worst idea i ever had your rails get so long they become untenable that when you're working with something down here you're going to make something down here no longer be straight or be the angle it needs to be and your whole thing is just going to cause you a headache so that's why you want to work in sections easy sections at a time uh, i find that it's best to do curves as their own separate thing so the way i would do this would be straight here including that little angle because that's a simple bend so angle that would be one piece of rail this curve out is a second piece of rail this straight is a third piece of rail this bend is a fourth piece of rail five six seven so to do this one piece which is barely more than an inch long i would use seven pieces of photo edge rail and yeah, that is a lot of cutting, but that's the way you're going to get the best results. Because let's say everything is perfect up to here, and then this bend goes all cattywampus, and you try to fix it, and you screw something else up, you're just going to hate yourself. Nobody wants that. So seven pieces it is. Now to do the bends, it's uh, the curves, rather, it's a bit different than your standard bend. This is where I'm going to get out my piece of foam. Any foam will work as long as it's something that is pliable, that has give to it. You can see there. This is just regular moving foam. There's actually this really great stuff at, at Michael's or any craft store. It's just a big pad of foam, like 11 inches by 17 inches. It compresses. I think it's the stuff that you use to make kids crafts out of. I love the stuff. I'm just out of it. It's like a dollar for a pad. So you've got no excuse not to have a bunch of it. And I'm talking to myself as I say that. All right. How am I going to do this curve? Leave my rail there so I don't lose it. You're going to hear some clattering here. That's as I'm pulling out my dowels that I showed you. These are my smallest dowels. I, I got toothpicks that are smaller, but what you want to do is find the right diameter dowel for your bend. So looking at this bend, I'm going to take this dowel, hold it over it, and that is pretty close. I don't know if you can see that or not. Now remember that with photo etch, it's going to spring back. 
So you want to actually get a dowel in this case that's slightly smaller than what you need. If you get something that's exactly the right size, your curve is going to wind up being too large of a diameter. So in this case, I want something smaller. All right, I don't want to work with this whole length of rail. That would be a waste. Let me go ahead and trim off, uh, you know, let's say four and a half or so sections of it. Just a random number. It's always good to have spare rail. I've got so much of it that it doesn't matter, but uh, the more edge kits you buy, you're just gonna have miles of the stuff. All right, I'm gonna put that near the edge where I can get my dowel over it, and I'm just gonna start pushing. Pushing and rolling, and as I roll it, you see it's creating more of a circle. If I push straight down and let go, what you have is a piece that's now been compressed in the middle. If I push straight down and roll, that rolling action is going to start affecting the sides. You get something much more of a circle. This is the same technique I use for making splinter shields. But here, I've got this funky bend now. Now that's real ugly because I wasn't trying to make it pretty. I was just trying to demonstrate the principle behind it. So I'm going to unspool this. It's the other thing I love about working with steel instead of brass, that it's really forgiving. You can spool it and unspool it several times before it starts to really fracture. Okay, so now I've got a little bend there. And again, every time you roll this, you're going to be basically remaking the shape of it. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. Because what you're doing here as you're pushing down is you're making it perfect. All right, the shape I want is going to be like a U, where it's got a nice curve on one side and then straight edges on the other. Let's check our work. You check your work all the time. You never get it right the first time. You check, and then you recheck, and then you recheck. That is not pretty. Time to bend it some more. Lots of pressure. Okay, that looks a little bit closer. Okay, so the bend angle is just about right, but it's not straight. See how it's 90 degree turn, and then suddenly curve, and then back to being perpendicular to the main flow of the deck. So I need our the edges now to be perpendicular. So let me get out my tweezers. And I'm going to clamp this in place like so. Try to get it where you can see that. And I'm just going to start bending it by hand oh so gently. And this is really where it's all feel. Um, there's no way I can describe it better than that. This is just a matter of knowing when to stop. That's pretty close. Let's take a look. Okay, I've gotten that pretty close. Once you reach a certain point, you're close enough where the glue is going to hold it in place. So if it's not 100% in line with the deck, and trust me, it rarely is, you can make it close enough and then the glue will do the rest of the work for you. Okay, see that? That's pretty close to what I want. But of course, it's awfully long, much longer than I need. All I'm gonna do is once I'm sure I've got it the right shape, I'm gonna cut the excess ends off to length. Okay, so just as we did before and we held the rail against the deck and counted the number of sections, remember that over here? I'm gonna do the same thing at this section. So I'm gonna hold this piece I'm going to hold it right over where it's going to be going, look at it from the side, and see how many sections I've got. So here, from the curve, it's going to be a little bit less than one section. And then on the other side, it's going to be a little bit less than one section. So let me go ahead and trim that off on both sides. Right there. my workbench and my floor is just littered with tiny scraps of PE railing that I'm going to step on one day and regret all this trimming. Put that right there. Voila! So now we've done two of our seven sections. 
and you've seen what it looks like to do sharp angles and curved angles. Now I'm not going to do this whole piece of plastic because it's really the same technique repeated ad nauseum. But now that we've cut these two types of sections, let's take a look at how we glue them. All right, so because I used two main glues and I got two pieces of rail here, I'm going to show you what it's like to use both types of glue. Uh, first, I'm going to go with the Loctite Super Glue. Now, it might be tempting if you've never worked with super glue before. I don't know if you have or haven't, but you might be tempted to just apply it directly to the part and do not do that because you will quickly lose control. Uh, I've just got this glass ashtray that has about a year and a half's worth of super glue built up on it. Sometimes I'll do little markings on it if I'm going to do a long gluing session so I'll know where my current glue is. I'll just remember, oh, I dropped glue in the circle or glue in the X or glue in the triangle. Uh, because I'm only using a little bit today, that doesn't matter. But because it really blends into this huge glob of glue, um, that's how I just don't get lost. I should probably just go buy a new ashtray. They're like a dollar. But anyways, all right, take the cap off and I'm put some in the circle today. Let's drop that in place. Now, you can use a number of different types of tweezers. I'm just going to use these precision tweezers. They're kind of my favorites. I'm going to... So go ahead and get that curve out of the way because we're going to start with the straight. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hold it in the angle I know it, I know it needs to be held in. And keep my tweezers off of the bottom. So this, this is going to be the bottom of the rail. What I don't want is my tweezers to be sticking out below the bottom because then I'm going to get glue on my tweezers and I'm never going to be able to get this part where I want to go. So let me adjust it so that tweezers are not on the bottom. Okay, and now get my glue applicator, my little needle chuck. I'm gonna dab it in here. This is really thick glue. You can see how it's really gloopy. It's not liquidy at all. And because this stuff is so strong, I only need a little bit. So I'm gonna put some here at the edge, and here, and there. And that'll be really enough. So now I'm just going to put it in that space. From this angle is really hard, so I hope this is going in the right place. Oh, look at that, it did. So, voila, rails. Now that'll be fully cured in just a couple of seconds, so it'll stay in place for a good long while. All right, now how about that next section, that bend, that curve rather? Well, I'm gonna use the gator glue for that. So this, this is really thick and I haven't opened it for a couple of days, so you can see it's actually kind of clumped up there at the top. And that's fine. However, if it gets to where it's clumped down at the bottom, all you gotta do is shake it. I'm gonna take it off camera to do that. Shake it up a little bit and it'll all go right back to the top. Okay, let me get a toothpick here and go ahead and also get my piece in my tweezers. Same rule applies about the tweezers not extending to the bottom. You want to keep them, there you go, and hold it in a way where it will not be awkward for you to place it on the finished piece. What you don't want to do is have to like bend your arm around to get it in the right spot. So hold the piece in a way and the photo edge in a way where you can just naturally apply it. Go ahead and dip in my toothpick. I only need a tiny, tiny bit of this stuff. So, and now I'm going to gently rub the bottom of my photo etch along that glue. And that'll be enough. And now, just like before, I'm gonna place it gently in the spot it needs to go. There we go. Yep. So now you have your curved piece of railing is on there too. And you would just build out from there. Once your, uh, your pieces are in place with gator glue, remember gator glue isn't, isn't the permanent solution. It's absolutely perfect for placing pieces, <clears throat> but you can always improve your bond a little bit. So what I will do actually is get out a little bit of extra thin glue. regular extra thin CA. 
I have a second little ashtray that I use for thin glue and I drop it in there. I'm going to use my applicator again for this. Now I just got my applicator all gummed up with some of that Loctite. So how do I get it off? There you go. Good as new. Why waste money on new needles or an applicator when you can just burn off an old needle and you're perfectly fine. Alright, so I'm going to take this, dip my applicator in it, and I'm going to run that along the edge of the pieces I just placed. And because it's thin glue, capillary action is going to suck it into the gap between the plastic and the photo etch so that it's going to be drying very quickly and exactly where you want it to be. All right. Those are the basics for bending and gluing. We're going to go ahead and wrap up with a quick talk about the next steps, and I'll see you there. Okay, so you may have noticed that this entire process has been on a piece of bare plastic, non-painted plastic. That's when I prefer to do my photo etch because any sort of glue stains or spills that you get along the edge will simply be covered up by paint. The one exception to that entire rule is going to be if you're using a wood deck. I have here a super non-accurate piece of Art Walks deck right here on this losing focus. Let's see. There we go. So that piece of Art Walks is there to demonstrate if you had to paint vertical structures coming up from the deck, like say uh, turret barbettes or superstructure pieces, I'll always paint those first and then lay Art Walks down on top of that because you get really clean lines that way. But what if you got to do railing? Well, unfortunately, that's when you have to apply the railing after you've painted and then paint the railing separately. I would just do this by masking along the edge. Let me get my thing out here. Masking very, very close along the edge of the railing, just carefully masking it, and then painting both sides. That's how I had to do the, uh, the Japanese battleship Fuso. That's how I've got to do parts of the Franklin Carrier. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but you're going to get cleaner lines that way. But let's face it, if you were looking for the easiest thing in the world, you wouldn't be doing one 700 ship photo etch, would you? So hope you're up for the challenge. All right. I really hope that these quick little tips and tricks give you some, uh, some guidance in working with photo etch railing. They are going to make your ship builds pop. They're going to make everything look more realistic. They're going to give your ship a life and character that plastic rails or no rails simply cannot give it. And I can't imagine ever doing a ship build uh, in, in seriousness that didn't have photo etch now that I really learned how to do it. Hopefully you can learn to do it too and I'm sure in time you're going to be as best as you can possibly be at it so keep at it. All right this has been a fun tutorial for me. Uh, I'm always posting new tips and tutorials and reviews and whatnot uh, both on the Museum Modeler Facebook page which is facebook.com slash the museum modeler with one L. Uh, videos, of course, like this one on the Museum Modeler YouTube channel and the intermittently updated Museum Modeler blog. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff for that. I just, that's backlogged. I just haven't put it up yet. So I've got lots of photo galleries on there. I've got even more just waiting for me to stop being lazy and put on there. So hopefully one day soon I will. Okay, y'all, enjoy this. Let me know if you have questions, comments, or concerns. If you'd like to see something else. In the meantime, have yourselves a great night, a great weekend, and happy modeling to you.